Hello and welcome to Lightroom for Landscape. Uh, I'm here with Joe Cornish and we're continuing the coverage of the two new blending features that are in Lightroom CC. Yes, this time the panorama feature. So the first example, which uh, is perhaps slightly unconventional, is a vertical panorama based on uh, the picture being made with uh, a CSC camera, the Sony A7R, and a medium format lens using adapters. Uh, so the reason I shot it that way was to uh, to get medium format quality with uh, by extending the size of the file. So by putting two or three files together, uh, you can you can get a normal a normally proportioned image, uh, but instead of being a thirty six megapixel, it, it'll be nearer to seventy. Yeah. So this is using uh, the, the lens is mounted onto the tripod, and then you slide the camera up and down. That's, lenses, that's that correct. correct, yeah, and the beauty of it is it means you can also use uh, a little bit of tilt yep. uh, to control focus. So we should be able to see, this is this is the bottom exposure, so we can see how sharp that is. Yep. And 100%, and we go to the, the rear picture and we can see that that's As it renders pretty pretty decent as across well. Across there as well. Yeah. Um, now we should point out that we actually have three images here. We have the bottom image, uh, a darker version that's slightly higher up. I'd love to be able to tell you that uh, this is all deliberate, part of a, a plan, but I'm afraid it's probably not. Uh, I think there's a certain amount of incompetence has gone on here. Well, I, I accidentally chose it as one of the extra images in this panorama, and we, we blended it, first of all, without realising. And surprisingly, Lightroom did quite a good job. Shall, shall we try blending the whole thing to begin with? Just to... Yeah, that'd be great. So there's three exposures altogether. So we choose all the three exposures we want to use. Um, Right-click or you can use the photo menu, uh, photo merge panorama, next to the HDR selection. And on the face of it, it's panorama only, that's all it's uh, asking for. So you've got three different exposures, but lo and behold, a perfect blend. Uh, this is just a preview, yes. so I think you're kind of getting the best of, of all worlds there. Uh, it seems to be reading that darker image uh, that is the third one of the three which is uh, the middle one, and then it's tweaking the exposure of the other two it's to match it. Blended them very, very well. So let's, let's just see how that works when we... We do have a choice of projection, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about in the article associated with, with this about what the projections do, and I don't think they'll do very much in this particular case. Um, not very much at all. But if you're doing a rotational panorama, it, might make, it will make a bigger difference. So that's, that's a fair point, and really this one shouldn't because the alignment should be perfect. The correct. image circle itself hasn't moved at all, it's just the camera itself that's moved. So it's a, it's a flat stitch, these, yeah. these, you should be able to overlay these in Photoshop uh, quite simply, but they, the blending of the exposure is something that's a bonus in this case. Well, and the beauty of it too is that, uh, as before with the HDR mode, it creates a DNG, or a RAW file. Uh, thereby giving us all of the flexibility of the raw files. And that's a huge advantage, I think. Yes, and we can see the progress on the top left-hand side, where it says creating panorama. It is, does take quite a while with the 36 megapixel captures, uh, and obviously even longer once we get up to 50 and above. So uh, you just have to be patient, I'm afraid, at, at times like this. Or I should upgrade my laptop. Well, that's true. That would probably help. An SSD laptop to next time uh, around, please. Yeah, this is, this is actually a, a 2009 um, MacBook Pro, um, and it still, still works well. I use it for my one gigabyte scans processing. Just takes slightly longer to do things. Well, it says a lot for these computers that they can, you know, given the fact that you use this thing probably every day. Yes. Uh, so it's taken a hammering, hasn't it? It does indeed. Uh, here we go. So that's the, the completed file stitched together. And you can see how it's blended the background. If we put a little bit of shadow recovery on there. Yep. It's well, a very good job, hasn't it? It has. It has. Uh, can we have a look at the, uh, the crop tool just to see how it's, it's automatically detected the edges and kept things within. And I'd probably favour a five by four uh, crop on that. So it's, yeah. It just takes a little bit more off the side edges there. And we can see how it's flat joined these these two images and it knows that they're slightly offset. So you can see the slight offset in the corner there. Yeah. Uh, so we've got five four, is that okay? That's 
good to me. Uh, I think we'll find if we look at the information tab uh, that it's now a pretty large file. Yes, I think uh, this is something quite nice. If you enter the view options, and I'm not sure we can do it here, let's go to library for a second. Um, nope. I forgot where these are. We're there looking is. for the actual size of the image, the yeah, file info. There's an option that allows me to show the megapixels. So we go into loop view, I think this is, isn't it? And we can do... This is a new one on me, I must have been... Camera megapixels. Okay, cool. So if I close that now and we look in the top right-hand corner, top left-hand corner, ah. that's 65 megapixels. Very interesting. So you can okay. modify these to find out. So it's a 65 megapixel image we have, even with the crop to 5.4. Wow, that's um, that's actually quite exciting. Uh, uh, certainly, it, I, I'm very pleased with the fact that you know, when you use medium format uh, lenses, you can you can use the the tilt to create this additional uh, focus quality, yes. um, which is great, and uh, and also the offset allows us to do this without moving the lens. So. Yeah, it's uh, almost the best of both worlds. Yeah. And we can still use the develop module to um, do our lens corrections. I believe there's a little bit of barrel distortion on this. Yep, so perhaps and plus 10 or so. That will reduce the scale of the image very slightly. And then I can or the size of it. fix the horizon. Yep. There you go. Oops, I've got to constrain the crop. We can see some white appearing at the top because I've rotated it slightly. Yep, constrain to image. That's it. There we go. 65 megapixels still. We haven't done any colour adjustment. Well, actually, to be honest, uh, I, I think I'd be very happy with that just as it is. Now, it's uh, not perfect. We did try to find another example. We were going to do a side-to-side -side stitch, and I chose an image from Iceland uh, as a bit of a challenge for the software. Um, and if I go to uh, oh, put these in the right order. Slightly confusing me when we look at the browser. It's They appear to be the kind of wrong way round. Is that because you were guilty of, of moving I, the camera I, from right to left? I did go from right to left, <laughs> just to be completely anti-establishment. Um, you can see that that's our... Uh, I want to be able to see those, show those side by side, but it's not going to do it. Do you know to do see it? if that does it. No, it doesn't. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Um, so that's panorama. And, and, and the reason I chose it is because it's more, more difficult. We've got areas with very, very little detail in. And it, to lo and behold, and it might repeat it this time, if I try and photo merge this into a panorama, yeah, we'll see if it manages at all. I should say that the previous time we did this, it, it ignored the sun. Yes, and it's done it again. So if we go if we pull this down slightly, you can see that it's taken... It's completely lost that part of the image, in fact, hasn't it? It's taken bits of the right-hand side of the picture mm. here, and bits of the left-hand side of the picture here, and missed the whole middle out. Um, so it's not perfect. Uh, it won't it won't stitch everything and that is that is a challenge though I think that would be a challenge for most things but we did go and use Lightroom Photoshop and Photoshop sorry mm. and this is the result from Photoshop and you can see immediately there that I didn't even keep the camera level when I was doing my panorama which, which didn't help Lightroom probably either uh, this is a case where I couldn't use any downward shift on a lens and so I wanted to point the camera slightly down, and I end, I've ended up with a bowed horizon, which we can try and correct using uh, the warp tool in Photoshop. And Photoshop is very impressive. It's done, a, it's done a good job. And I should add that I tried to use PT GUI with the default settings. Uh, and from an overview, overview, it looks like it's done a good job. But if you look in the middle of the background there, it hasn't done a good job. A horrible stitch. <laughs> yeah. Now, PTGU is very advanced, so we could we could do sorts of things by pinning edges together and corrections yeah. and making it work. But straight out of the bag here, Photoshop, Photoshop actually did a better job. Did the best job. Yeah. So anyway, that's a, a very interesting. It would be intriguing to know why there's a, an issue there with Lightroom, but I think we have to remember that it is 
their first, uh, the Lightroom team's first uh, attempt to do this, and overall they've done well. I have done a few other panoramas of my own which have worked fine. Yes. Uh, yes. But maybe the the mapping for the raw files is still quite tricky. Uh, but the, I'm sure we'll see improvements. But it's great to be able to have this as a DNG file. So we have all the raw adjustments we can make that we had before. Yes. Um, yeah. The flexibility of the of exposure is a primary, isn't it, here, yeah. where, where, where you compare this with a with a TIFF or a JPEG, and that's the advantage, uh, even if in the end we, we edit finally in Photoshop um, and you know send them off to the world in it as a JPEG. But having that control is absolutely terrific. Mm, wonderful tool. Great. Thank you. Thank you.